That should get us both. So here is the thing. <clears throat> when we get into the psychological battle, <laughs> as we do with this weight thing, you've never pulled 391 in the in the gym. You've barely pulled what 385. Yes. That was your that was your goal. Then we jumped up to 402 at 182.5 kilos, and you pulled that. Now that was a max. But what I'm telling you that you have that 408 in you, muscle wise. We know that, okay? So one of the biggest problems in all of this is always gonna be confidence. That's always our issue, right? If you doubt yourself even a little, like Jim and I were just talking, if you doubt yourself even slightly, it it's doesn't go up. That's not gonna happen. And you know I battle that myself. Mm -hmm. And if I don't feel right or I don't, I'm, I'm just completely not there. The, the whole point was, and then we always talk about what? Conservation of energy, right? It sounds like a, a, a deal for, uh, for renewable energies. But it's true, because our bodies can only do so much with whatever we feed it, right? So what did we change the biggest thing in our diet, this, this, this training session? More protein. More protein, both of us. Mm -hmm. You're at around 140 grams. At your body weight of about 150, between, 150, between 140, Thank between you. 148 and 155 at the very most, and you fluctuate that. Of course, a lot of that is water and bloating and, and uh, uh, joint swelling and that kind of crap. Uh, so what was I doing? Oh, so feeding the muscle and maximizing the muscle's ability to to do the work is what this is kind of all about. And you got, and then you have the neural the neurological aspects of it and, and how you're able to get the neurons firing the way you need them to, in your muscles, in your brain, the whole thing. So it's a big lot of stuff. So for you, <clears throat> and what Jim and I were also talking about is how women in general are more likely to doubt themselves. Would you agree with that? I agree. <laughs> and so, I mean, men can get overconfident, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do any better either. Because at the end of the day, if you doubt yourself even a little, or whatever you're trying to do, isn't probably going to work. So, I think the best thing for you, and when you come to these competitions, for you especially, and it doesn't work for everybody, but you have a lot of people here that know your ability, probably even more so than you do, like Jim, is one of the judges, one of the coaches here, and he works for NASA. But they know when they see someone like you, where your capability really is. <laughs> A, it's experience, they've seen it, they understand it, they know what people in your body type and your abilities can go. So I think for our next training, for both of us is going to be working a little bit more on the confidence levels and the psychological. So in the next time, in our conservation of energy, like he was talking about, we'll play around with getting you at 402 as your third lift. So yeah. that, that con in the competition it matters because that goes toward your coefficient in the meat itself. Yeah, the, the fourth lift doesn't count towards the meat. No, your fourth yeah. lift is a record. <clears throat> But it has nothing to do with the meat, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So your 391 will go for a coefficient in this meat. And in this case, it's the team. So that will go for your team as well. Yeah. So <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to film this just simply because it's the biggest hang up in pretty much anybody's lifting, whether it be bench press, squat, deadlift, wherever there's a full body movement where it requires your whole goddamn body to push and move weight. Like you said, you're fighting you're fighting gravity. And and we have to be we have to be able to do that. So with confidence. And we've always paid attention to our diet. And we've been paying even more attention to it probably in the last year. Right? Yes. We've always paid attention to it. <clears throat> but this time we really paid attention to it. And like I said, if you're not counting 
what's going on in your body, I'm sorry, you don't know. If you're not counting calories, in which calories incorporates your proteins, your macros, your, your carbohydrates, uh, all of the things that matter were just a big chemistry, we're just a bunch of chemicals. So, yeah, so now we know where our carbs need to be. I need more carbs, you need less. We both need a shitload of protein. And um, water, staying hydrated, I've been doing better about using drinking more water which is a big problem for me. You're usually pretty good about it, although we drink a lot of coffee. It's it not, counts. It does count, <laughs> it's not quite the same. It's a diuretic in its, its own right, but it's still liquid, and I'm trying to do better at it myself. So just talking about these things because it's, it's essential. Confidence, every little thing you put in your body matters. Everything. Every little thing you put in your body matters. Everything you breathe matters. So, when you're maximizing the effort that you put in to achieve these goals, and that's the other thing, goals, right? Gotta have goals. If you don't have your goals, yeah. Yeah. you're not that motivated, right? And the motivation comes by achieving those goals, and now that you've achieved a huge goal, which is your four, uh, break, you're just breaking 400, that, that motivates you more to maximize what you put in your body, to maximize your workouts and all of those things. And me too. I mean, I got my own goals that I got to achieve. And um, so, but we know it's working, right? What yes. would you attribute to what's working? What's working? What do you feel is really working? <clears throat> well. From your standpoint. I, I changed, I, I upped my protein. Became, sure. I became very strict on what I ate. Yeah. I had to kick out some of some of the carbs that weren't agreeing with me. Like? Um, crackers. <laughs> I love they're not they're and they're almond flour crackers, right. but still chips. Oh, potato yeah. chips. I have a weakness for potato chips. They're they tasty. have finally had to go. They're gone for good because they don't do my body well. I have. Um, well, our training tra has has uh, changed a little bit. Um, I'm kind of just letting you tell me what I need to do. But uh, it's the food. I mean, I, I got tired of chewing at times. Yeah. You know, and it yeah. was more food than I'm used to eating. And but honestly, we haven't really <laughs> changed a whole lot in our uh, training, other than keeping a little bit of track. I'm trying to keep them a little closer, closer together. together. Yeah, so that we don't put deadlifts seven days apart. Newbies need to have that seven day uh, stretch. We do not. We need three to four days. Typically four is perfect. Whether it be squat, deadlift, bench for, for us. And then we just do back and blind. You know, we mix all that in with our delts and so on. I don't think we're gonna really change a whole lot other than we try to mix it up a little bit just for body confusion and try to do something else. We don't go heavy a lot, but we keep it heavy. That's a little oxymoron, but. We don't go. We don't max out. We don't max out. We don't max out a whole lot. But, um, and, and you we, know, we don't train until we're dead. We don't train until right. we can't walk out of the gym. That's right. We train hard, but we're not overtraining. And overtraining is truly a problem. And when I was younger, and I've told Joseph this and everybody else, I mean, we weren't making any gains. You know, I mean, you make some because you're young and you got testosterone and you're, you're there and you're eating like a horse. But when you when you really pull back on that and you train more efficiently, your body grows faster and you get you do get bigger gains. I mean, I've been doing this since uh, 1982, 83 more consistently. So 1983 to now, and uh, had a few downtimes, but. And that was mostly from accidents and shit. Other than that, um, and it's much harder for me to make gains at my age, at 58. You're 48 here in a f few days. <laughs> yeah, well, soon. Soon, a soon, a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, a couple weeks. This so, was, and this was a life goal to get this lift before my birthday. That's right. Goal. Yep. Another goal that you you got. You got the goal. I've worked on this, getting this all year. That's right. And you through, got it. Through a fractured rib. <laughs> <laughs> through a fractured rib. Yeah. And you got it done. And you worked through the pain. Yes. And we work around the pain. I worked through a lot of pain, which I don't recommend for everybody. I had 
doctor's approval to work through a slightly fractured rib. That's right. But it was a lot of pain, and especially under deadlift, and it was mm -hmm. the, pretty much the only one that. Did and the hurt deadlift the most. is my favorite lift, and yeah. it quickly became my most, my least favorite lift for a while because it hurt. Yeah. But well, you know, I worked yeah. through it, and actually, it, it, my back's doing great, and yeah. everything's finally coming together. Yeah. yeah. So you know, we worked through some more uh, issues, and. Um, including both of us um, so you know um, maybe I'll hit my 455 here soon you motivated me <laughs> <laughs> I gotta quit the, the psychological crap and that's that's kind of well of the and I, I do feel I will say this in the gym the plates are, are huge the bumper plates yeah and it, it, you can see the weight that's right you can see at the, the meat you know the hundred pound plates are not big well, wide but there's only they, they look smaller, way smaller. They look smaller than a, a 45 well, pound yeah, bumper I, plate. Well, yeah, you're right, because the wider. And right. you know what? It doesn't, when you walk up to that bar, it doesn't look as intimidating, but the weight is there. Right, yeah. But it doesn't look like it, the weight is well, there. Well, that's more of a psychological and, thing. And then, you know, you have all these people counting on you to get that lift. They're there for, they're there for a show. They want to see it. Yeah. You know? So. Well, and, and the thing is, um, for you at, at the competition, it motivates you. And I, you don't go out there with stage fright, you go out there with no, motivation. No, I don't. And you go out there with some good adrenaline, healthy adrenaline, by the way. You can over-adrenalize yourself, over-stimulate yourself to the point where you've actually kicked, knocked down your neurological abilities at that point. So there's always a balance, right? Back to my word, balance. Everything is in balance. And when everything is in balance, and you got the confidence, your goal is getting there, right? So that's that's our thing. So we'll, our next training cycle pretty much stay the same. I'm going to keep up our uh, our lifting cycle the way we have. I'm going to try to throw in a few different extra exercises. We're trying to build muscle as well as um, uh, maintain, of course. Build muscle, lean out a little more. I'm super lean anyway. But and you're I, leaning I just, out. I just need more muscle you because I'm, muscle. I'm, I'm a little tapped out on, on what it. I can do. I, I, I feel I'm getting a little tapped out. Yeah, um, well, in order to get more strength, I'm going to have to build a little more muscle, more muscle. And, then, and then train that muscle to, do to be same. strong. Well, but you're in that mode. So, yeah. I mean, and then again, it's still maximizing what you have. Uh, yeah. There's not a human being on the planet, including Eddie Ball and any of these other guys uh, that are truly maximizing because it's just a biological physics problem that we just can't do it. Some better than others, um, and that's that's why they can do it. So, but that's kind of the trick too, and that's a whole other issue. But we work on all of those things. That's we fun. have a little friend here. Yeah, we do all of those things, and it, it means incorporating all of that information as best we can to be as efficient as we can to pull as much weight as we can. Push, pull, whatever it is you want to do. Or run, or climb, or any, any whatever other Whatever sport thing. you're doing. Whatever sport yeah. you're doing, the mental side of it is absolutely uh, imperative. And it's not just saying, oh, I can do it. It's saying like, no, I really can do it. And I've trained to do it. And I know what to look out for. And I know what I'm doing with my body. And I know how I'm doing it. We'll, we'll end it with that, but I think uh, I think we've covered a good part of it because all the more essential parts of stuff that you can get on YouTube on a whole bunch of different ways, but it's hard to wrap it all up into one thing. I think that's part of the problem. So, anyway, congratulations today. Yes, that was, was awesome, good. amazing. Was awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep yes. training.